Now, those who understand the chemistry between the two Asian giants say that there are no shortcuts to improving India-China ties. Months after the Doklam standoff, both countries pressed the reset button and have been at it since. The latest case in point, the Chinese Defence Minister is in India. While leaders from both sides have met on numerous occasions since Wuhan, the Defence Minister's visit is the first formal engagement of this level since Wuhan. Many say that summit was aimed at managing differences rather than achieving any breakthroughs. This one is about sitting down for business. The engagement is aimed at stepping up strategic communication between the militaries of India and China. And here's what's on the table. First up, the border issue. The perennial dispute India and China share a 3,500 kilometer long boundary, most of which is not delineated meaning not clearly defined. This has prompted multiple standoffs between both sides. Now they are working towards a mechanism under which troops will inform the other side before patrolling disputed areas along the border. The two defence ministers may also attempt to resolve differences over setting up a hotline between their respective armies. The Indian Army wants a hotline link between the Director General Military Operations or DGMO and his counterpart in the People's Liberation Army or the PLA of China. But there is one pressing issue that China and India will have to confront sooner rather than later. It's the One Belt and One Road initiative. China desperately wants India on board. India so far has firmly refused. The reason is simple. One Belt, One Road challenges India's territorial integrity. It's Pakistan arm called CPEC or the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor passes through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. How can India be part of a project that legitimizes Pakistani occupation of its territory? At Wuhan, PM Modi expressed India's objection and China's Vice Foreign Minister acknowledged it by saying that his government will not force India on the matter. So, is China being generous or smart? It's an open secret that India's reluctance hurt them. India's participation would have boosted not just the economic viability of the project, but also given it a facelift. Not only is India not joining the list of potential opponents, is also growing. The dragon is now getting cold vibes from countries like Malaysia. Day before yesterday, the Malaysian Prime Minister announced that he will shelve two major infrastructure projects by Chinese companies because the country cannot afford to repay the money China is investing. These two projects are part of the Belt and Road Initiative and PM Mahathir Mohammed feels that it could be a new version of colonialism. Lately, other countries who had signed up for war have begun to renegotiate their deals with the Chinese government.